off top. I thought that Jaden Daniels was going to get exposed against the Ravens, but the more I watch the tape, I realize they got a chance. and He might be the best quarterback in football right now. So Jaden Daniels' ability is all based on – it's kind of built around not his athleticism but his deep ball accuracy. So this is Jaden Daniels in the most recent game. It's just single high. It's very obvious that they have uh, – single coverage on the outside and Jaden ja- Daniel steps in the pocket and delivers a perfect pass to De'Ami Brown for a touchdown. Nothing special about this. They're chipping to pr- help protection because they have a good pass rush and attack deep down the right side of the field. Okay, so that's where we start. You load the box because they run the ball well and that's what, what you do. So the way that you think that you can beat a quarterback like this is by getting pressure with four. So again, just basic man coverage and the pocket collapsed on Jaden Daniels. And what do we get out of that? Another big play. So how do you address this if you can't stop him? Here we go. And this is this play again. Pocket collapse. I can't see who's open. Zone coverage in the back end, which is supposed to inhibit his ability to scramble. But it doesn't. All right. So we can't stop him with basic uh, four-man rush. We blitz. Here's Jaden Daniels. If you look at the beginning of this play, you watch Jaden scan from right to left. And this is something that a lot of quarterbacks, veteran quarterbacks, have a hard time doing. Scan right to left, find where the blitz came from, attack that spot, the high receiver. You look at his body position, he scans from right to left, free runner, gets rid of the ball. Okay. So now we're in a situation where there is no hot read. How do you address this? Free runner with no hot read. He steps back, and of course, this offense, excuse me, this defense is challenging him to make the longest, most difficult throw with pressure in his face. This is the Browns' defense. Longest, most difficult throw with pressure in his face. He nails it on second and six, all right? This is two ways that he can address the blitz, and here is the third way. Free runner. Look at six. Free runner coming. Nobody's open. This is a dead play for most quarterbacks in football, of course, but you see the dots and the lines show you what Jaden Daniels can do on that. His biggest run of the game sets up uh, another scoring opportunity for them. And this is on fourth and three. So I think this is important to understand. It's on third and fourth downs. Normally, you'd want a quarterback to potentially get rid of this ball if there's a free runner, even if you don't have a hot read. Not Jaden. You don't want him to get rid of it because he can turn it in this, especially on third or fourth down. So big play sets up another scoring opportunity. This is it again. All right. Free runner. Again, they blitz more. They get him to turn left. They blitz more to the right than they can protect. Free runner. Jaden scrambles out, and this is Charlie's favorite play of the day. Mm. Rolls right, drops a dime, and the accuracy on the run. This is just in one game. And this laser show. This is quite possibly his worst statistical game of the season. But this is what he does in a game where I think he only completed like 18 passes or something like that, 14 maybe, less than that. But that's what he does if you try to blitz him. I'm sure he's not going to be perfect. All right, now this is why coming into this game, I was like, all right, he's a rookie. The Ravens do confusing things. It's going to hurt the Ravens. One thing that I do think bodes well for the Ravens in this game is, no disrespect to Terry McLaurin, but he's not, in my view, the type of receiver that commands a lot of attention. So here's the Ravens last week against the Bengals. The reason why I think they had a lot of trouble against the Bengals, they give up a lot of explosives, particularly against teams with big-time weapons like this. This happened to be an incomplete pass, but if you look at – Chase in the middle field, the number one receiver. You see how the rest of the defense reacts to Chase, which leaves Higgins and a man coverage. He drops this pass, but he's open. That wasn't the only time that you're going to get this particular situation for the Ravens. The Ravens give a lot of explosives in part because of the attention they play to top receivers and in part because they blow coverages. Again, look at this. Watch the safeties roll to the left. They all Everything rolls left to help out Chase. You leave Another receiver over and one-on-one, give up a big play. Ravens are one of the worst teams in the league when it comes to giving up explosive plays, and this is evidence to why. Another reason why, as much as Mina and I fawned over how impressive the Ravens' defense is and their bluffs and their blitzes and their simulated pressures, one of the results of that is you have guys doing things that they aren't normally accustomed to doing, and you will get blown coverages and give up big plays. So here we go. This is supposed to be a cover three. If you see Marlon Humphrey right here, he's coming from down to suggest that we're not in cover three. Maybe we're in man, some sort of blitz. It's not a blitz. It's just cover three. Humphrey is supposed to be getting back. And this is a position that he doesn't find himself in often. He squeezes down on this, and then you get 
chase over the top for a big play. So special superstar players break this defense, and sometimes there are blown coverages that could hurt this defense. I think the way that they have success is against quarterbacks that they can confuse. And I thought Jaden Daniels was one of those quarterbacks, but I was wrong. Play the music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. All right, welcome to the Dominique Foxworth Show. We are joined, Charlie and I are, as we are every Friday, by the great Mina Kimes. Welcome, Mina. Hello. Thank you for having me. (laughs) So thank you for sitting through my dots. There's so many points on this game and both of these teams that I would like to talk about. I don't know where to start. I'm feeling less confident. Last week I created a bit of a stir by saying that I thought that the Ravens were better than the Chiefs. And I feel less confident about that after watching how many times the Ravens blew coverages. But anyway, Mina, what do you think? Uh, do you want to hit the Jaden side or the Raven side first? Because I love. Let's I love, start. Let's start with Jaden. Let's start with yeah. Jaden because Charlie is all jazzed up. I when I said I don't know if the audio came through when I went ooh on the um the <laughs> play where he hits Terry for the big gain. My ooh was actually I didn't notice that they had Zach Ertz running like a little swirl <laughs> underneath. I, I anyways. Uh, <laughs> But I, it was that play and a lot of the plays you highlighted, they're they're really interesting because of what you said, which is week after week, it feels like we are seeing Jaden Daniels add to his repertoire, right? That's been my feeling watching him. Um, it, see, it feels like every game you're seeing new things and some things you didn't see in college. And in this this game against Cleveland was a really interesting one because Cleveland plays um, such a specific type of defense, one that's very different from Baltimore, right. and we hadn't seen him like match up with that particular type of defense. They they came into this very clearly trying to take the runaway, right? Stacking the right. box, linebackers um, t- scraping over to. Uh, handled Jaden on designed runs, playing a lot of man coverage. They were very clear, like, we are going to make you beat us through the air. And I think we saw a couple of things, which you highlighted there, that really impressed me. One, obviously, just he he is mentally very advanced as a quarterback, right? He was excellent um, against the Blitz. He is good at going through his progressions. He's working the whole field in a way that's pretty special. But also the thing that really jumped out to me, and this is what happened on the Terry play, of course, um, is the playmaking. Uh, I actually forgot which of my, I think it was actually, I think it was on NFL Live in the week. Um, we were talking about J- Jaden's playmaking and I noted, and we talked about this on my podcast too, that like it wasn't actually something he did a lot of in college. This, it was kind of like a miss characterization of who he was yeah Yeah, he actually like Mm. barely threw on the move in college and he has already done it at such a high level in the nfl but in this game in particular uh boy did he do it the thing that jumps out to me is the point that you were making is the i guess the best way i could like characterize it is the browns game plan worked Mm -hmm. yeah it got them what they wanted (laughs) like they they got him in third and long they got him in third and long with free runners. They got him in third and long with tight coverage. They got him in tough situations. They got him in third and long where he guessed wrong off the snap and had to adjust. Like, it worked. And they don't have, and as, as good as Terry McLaurin's numbers have been, I don't think any of us think of Terry McLaurin yeah. as like an A.J. Brown level uh, Tyreek Hill level guy like one of those guys he's going to get the top corner but he's not going to get uh, a safety over top and so they get him in these bad situations a bunch of third and longs and he finds ways out of it and I try to show some of the magical miraculous impressive plays and those are the highlights that you'll often see but the thing that little check down on second and 12 like he consistently answers these questions. And it's not just the, like, all right, I'm going to shake you and make a big play. It's that he knows what's happening. There's a difference between, oh, I got blitzed, but I'm a great athlete. And, all right, I think the blitz is coming now. This is an opportunity when I should make this decision. All right, it's fourth and three. The blitz is coming. I can't just get rid of the ball. Like, you can – you could – potentially put all this thought process into one play for any particular player. But the fact that he's done it 
third down after third down, game mm-hmm. after game. That's what suggests to me that I think he knows what the hell is going on, which is crazy to me because they're like Aaron Rodgers seems to not know what the hell is going See, on I, in some yeah. games. I hear you. I thought, I think though, he was so good in college at decision making against the Blitz mm. and also, again, full field reads and all of that. Yeah. The fact that he's doing the NFL level, don't get me wrong, it's really surprising. But it's really the pressure evasion that is yeah. stunning to me. And I, in this game, there are so many minutes. I, I Like you said, the Browns game plan was pretty smart and, and worked a lot of times. And he was really capable of evading rushers in a way that, again, I just didn't know if he would be capable of in the NFL. And it, frankly, it did look Lamar-like back there yeah. in moments. They're different in some ways. They're, they're similar in others. That might be one of the ways in which they're similar. Like, he has been extremely good at not taking sacks, which was a huge concern coming into the NFL. Not just, the obviously, the cartoonish sacks in the open field, yeah. but, um, you know, his pressure-to-sack ratio wasn't great in college. Again, this was not... Like his calling card coming into the league, and the fact that he's already good at so many of these things is, is truly astounding. Mina, it wasn't just it wasn't just that it wasn't great. He was getting sacked at like a historic rate for how long he held the ball at LSU mm-hmm. last year. That was like the ma- the major downside of him. Um, that his whenever they got back there, he went down. It's clear to me that he's that he's very smart. Like that's yeah. that's the part that seems very clear. That and obviously there's a maturity, and we. Uh, we attach a bunch of stuff to guys once they start having success. So, like, I don't know how committed he is. Everyone says he's super committed. Like, of course, these are the stories that come out. Troy Aikman saying yeah. he's more prepared than any rookie he's ever met with for a Monday night game. Sure as hell looks like it on yeah. the tape, which is all that I, we can go by. Like, I'm not in the yeah. building, but he doesn't seem – this will be a big test for him, but there will be opportunities. Go ahead, Mina. The one thing that I think helps the Ravens in this regard is they, for all of their foibles in coverage this year, which he uh, – mm alluded to and, and laid out um, they have been very good at stopping the run without allocating extra yeah. bodies to stop the run right that's a, one of the many differences between them and Cleveland Cleveland has to stack the box to stop the run so you get one-on-ones you get slightly easier reads whereas Baltimore does not have to they've been excellent in run defense those defensive tackles are extremely good so I think um, it's a different challenge for Jaden if, if you're playing a team that actually you know that has good run defense which I mean, so so I'm trying to think. Let me look at who they've played this so far this year, uh, sure. because I don't. I feel like this is certainly the best run defense that they've played. Yeah, so, totally different caliber. Okay, opponent. so yeah, right, I mean, yeah. the Bucks not great this year in run defense. The Giants not good. The Bengals horrible. The Cardinals horrible. The Browns actually bad in run defense too. So this is the first good run defense they're playing. Now again, he's shown us he can beat you through the air, right. but it's a different structure. That, the, that they're dealing with. So you never really, the reason I think even people like you and I who have watched these games and watched the film and feel like we have a good understanding of where the advantages and different disadvantages are, you never know exactly where the game, what tiny game inside the game is going to decide the game, you know, and, and how that's going to pan out. And I don't know if I'm being clear, but the point that I'm trying to make is, in this particular game, the Ravens, if they do not need to allocate an extra defender to the running game or allocate an extra defender to a particular receiver, that gives them the flexibility to confuse and challenge a bunch of quarterbacks, which is why I say they have trouble against receivers that require uh, some extra attention. But in this game, if they are able to stop the run without fully committing to stopping yeah. the run, then I think that they win. Because the thing that Jayden does that not everyone else is able, or most people aren't able to do, is if they have to put someone, it was the very first play I, I showed, which seems so simple, it's just a go. But if you look at guys throwing goes against um, single high, like, the success rate isn't as high as you would expect. And uh, particularly when you have receivers that are not Chase or somebody like that. You know, so like in this game, if they can run the ball enough that the Ravens have to come down, then they'll have to be single high. And the Ravens corners are not so perfect that they can't get beat with his deep ball. I think that's like, that's why I started with that play is as much as all the other stuff is impressive. That's the thing is he has the counter 
He has that accuracy, that deep ball accuracy, and I think that'll decide the game. If the Ravens can stop the run without committing safeties to the box, that means they can give a, they can be more flexible on, and take away the deep ball. But in that game against the Browns, I saw him a bunch of times, plays that I, I didn't show, just hit the far hash outs and hit far hash comebacks. So as a cornerback, if a quarterback can hit a far from one hash to the other side of the field, outside the numbers, five-yard hitch, and he could throw a perfect go. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I can't yeah. cover them all. I'm done. So, like, no, unless you are a uh, Patrick Sertan level yeah. cornerback, that type of somebody, like, yeah, unless you're champ, then you can do it all. So, that's what, like, I don't know. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing how well. And the thing is, you can't throw a go every down. So, right. it's going to be determined by three or four goes that he throws against single high. If he hits yeah. them, the Ravens are done. If he if doesn't, if they have to play single yeah. high, which I don't, yeah, if I they don't have to play single high, you think that they do? I um, no, I don't think that they oh, do. Sorry. I don't think that they do. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Jayden's running ability do. might force them to. But well, I mean, I think about the Bills game a little bit, yeah, and I mean exactly. the way, yeah, the which is you know another very very dynamic run, running quarterback, a very good run game, and the Ravens. Part of the reason they won. So much the, the defense played so well was game script, which I think factors in heavily yeah. here. If you can get this team playing from behind so that they actually, you know, have to drop back more, I think that they have the what they did with Buffalo, and this is I think where Terry McLaurin is so important. Baltimore was able to say, We are really like the most important person to take out of this is Josh Allen, right? right. Like we are not horribly worried about these receivers. We are uh, able to stop the run without going heavy on stopping the run. And because of that, we can create a lot of chaos around the line of scrimmage. We don't have to have, you know, Kyle Hamilton in coverage that much. He can also like, well, he wasn't covered. Some I'm saying he can help against the run. He can help against the quarterback. I think though, you know, Terry McLaurin is better than any of the Bills receivers yeah. for yeah. sure. So I really think sure. like he's going to be pivotal in this game yeah. um, because right. If the Baltimore Ravens aren't worried about him, you make an excellent point there. It allows them to do everything else so much easier. We'll see if they're able to hold up. And I, I don't even know. I mean, I guess Marlon Humphrey's still the Ravens' best corner. I, I think he they wanted well. to be. Yeah, I know, but I, I think they wanted to be Wiggins. Like, it seems clear to me that yeah. they wanted to be Wiggins. He's not there yet. But, um, and Marlon, yeah, Marlon's played well. He got a pick last week, but he's one of the guys who was <laughs> blowing some of these coverages, yeah. which you wouldn't expect from a veteran cornerback, but you are seeing that uh, from time to time. One more thing. To your point about respecting those guys outside, I noticed that in the Browns game, their middle of field safety in cover three and cover one was – just hanging out low. It's like take away these inside guys. Like yeah. the Browns did not the Browns a team who plays almost exclusively man coverage did not respect Diami or Terry McLaurin enough that the safety would even get deep. They were just begging them to throw posts and goes and they they nailed a couple of them. All right, go ahead, Charlie. No, I was just gonna say on the other side, like we've focused so much about how Jaden's gonna attack the Ravens defense because mm -hmm. that's probably the more interesting matchup. But is there any I mean Washington's defense to the first uh, three weeks was historically bad. They had forced yeah. three punts to the first three weeks. And on the other side, uh, maybe the only quarterback who's been better than Jaden Daniels in the entire NFL this year has been Lamar Jackson, who's probably playing at the highest level he's played at since his first unanimous MVP season. Is there any chance that's not just going to be a massive mismatch with the Ravens sort of eviscerating a not-so-stout Washington defense? But they have played better in the last two weeks. <laughs> It would have to be like uh, a game where the pass rush really goes crazy and like one of just like a Lamar mistake fest. You know, yeah. that's how I mean, I think it's very hard for me to imagine a world in which Washington has sustained success against this Baltimore run game. And if they do, they're going to leave themselves extremely vulnerable to the pass game. I mean, there's they're bad against tight ends. They're bad against number one wide receivers. They're bad, <laughs> like they're twos. you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a hard time imagining um, a, a situation that Washington wins this game and it's not a shootout. Yeah, like yeah. Washington wins this game, which it's is a possible. shootout. Yeah, which yeah, <laughs> it's it's absolutely, possible. it's entirely right possible. That's how. Yeah. That, that's the same thing we said last week about the Bengals. That the Bengals definitely were in position to yeah. win that game last week. Um, 
the the last thing that I wanted to address about Jaden Daniels is like their use of no huddle. And mm. one of the things I was, I guess I assumed that the purpose of no huddle is to reduce the like flexibility of the defense. But I, I noticed that it didn't seem to inhibit the Browns ability to like switch up coverages and things like that and change personnel and those sorts of things. But I guess it, it still has to shrink the playbook. So yeah, once teams know it's coming, I guess they can prepare for it, but it forces your coordinator to think faster be, without forces the defensive coordinator to think and react faster without forcing the offensive coordinator to do the same. So uh, particularly when you have a quarterback who's smart enough in a team that can change. And so like, if we, no huddle and get up on the line. The defense has to call a play. Yeah. And the, and the defensive coordinator is going to call something vanilla. And then the offense still has until there's 15 seconds left on the clock to have communications with the coach and communicate with each other. So it's an advantage. I do think that these teams know it's coming, so they probably have wristbands and a couple of numbers to go through to switch things. But for a team like the Ravens that have blown more coverage this year than you would expect, that's going to be an extra bit of pressure for them to be able to get to some of their more interesting things, which also could speak to why Jaden Daniels always seems to be really comfortable with the defense that he's facing. Yeah. Because they're, there's, it's not going to be that complicated. And, and we've seen like this is what makes him so unique that he's this advanced as a 23 year old rookie is obviously we saw during the Bengals game, the Monday night game where he was motioning for the sideline faster, faster, yeah. faster. You want to play faster from Cliff Kingsbury. But even the first play you showed the single high safety yeah. from Deami Brown, he checked into that. Right. He switched to play, saw single high and he's like, all right, let's just beat him with the go route here. Yeah. Part of the problem with no huddle though is, uh, if you go, you know, if you go three and out and yeah. suddenly your defense is back on the field and they were just on the field and tired. <laughs> Not a problem for us. Derek Henry's Not a problem been for us on third and fourth Slamming downs. the ball down your throat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's definitely helpful against d defenses like Baltimore, Minnesota that also like, um, you know, use obviously so much disguise on the back end. It clarifies things. If you guys just want to be bad at defense all the time, then it doesn't really matter whether the offense goes three and out or not. You're going to be yeah, the yeah. same level of defense either way. It's true. Or, or if we just convert every single third down and or fourth, fourth down, down and yeah. never punt and, and <laughs> score every single time we're in the red zone. All right, Mina. Thank oh, you so nope. much. Survivor. Oh, man. Survivor. Oh, I tried to do that last week, too. I know. All right. Uh, so Mina's in the lead. She's four and one. Mina, you can have the first pick this week since you Wait, are the only you person who got a win week? last week. Can you recap You have what picked happened? so far. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last first, week, I picked. First, tell us what happened. Okay. Mina picked the Jaguars, who got their first one of the season. Great pick. Claps for you. Incredible pick. Dominique jinxed the Seahawks, who lost to the Lions. Hey. A week after, I jinxed the Seahawks. Yes. Stop lost. picking the Seahawks. We can't anymore. Oh, you can't Yeah, anymore. Only, only you can pick the Seahawks oh, you now. you can pick the Seahawks, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I picked the Steelers, who... My heart was sweating. I, I mean, I, I thought there was a chance the Steelers were actually going to beat the Cowboys and break <laughs> up my perfect season. So currently, I am 0-5. Dominique is 2-3. and And Mina is 4-1. and Honestly, I think Dominique's in last place, though, because he's trying to pick the games right, and he's 2-3. and So, Mina, you've picked the Bills, Chargers, Bucks, Bengals, and Jaguars. You're on the clock. I'll take the Falcons this week if we're with the Panthers. Hmm. Nice. I haven't taken the Falcons yet. Uh, give me the Eagles over the Browns. Hmm. I don't want to pick the Eagles in any other game. They make me nervous, but I, I can trust them against the Browns, I think. That Browns defense, though, is still pretty good, even though they gave up a million points to Jaden. Yeah. So I wanted to pick the Ravens this week. Here we go. I really wanted go to pick, pick them. I've already picked them. I picked them in week uh, two, and they lost. Okay. Um, so I'm not obviously not going to pick Oh, that was the birth of the jinx. That's the birth of the jinx. Yeah, okay. The week, uh, well, you know, first it was the Bengals losing the Patriots, and then it was the Ravens week two loss. Oh, I know who right. you should um, pick. Who should I pick? No, no, no I'm going to tell you, actually. I've, I've thought about picking the Bears in London because that's a home game for the Jaguars. Mm. Could be a good pick. That's a good pick, yeah. I don't know, though. It's really tough. I got to pick a loser here. Um, and it has to be like even odds. Someone, someone. Like not something or, super obvious, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't like I can't. Who's pick, favorite like, in Chargers Broncos? Say. So, it's a good one. The Chargers are by three, and I thought about picking the Broncos. Oh, that Broncos defense is great. Yeah, I don't hate that. But the Broncos could easily win that game. I mean, it's true. That's the whole point. All the games that you're picking from, are, and I could, right, so pick the Chargers. could easily win, right? Pick I thought about picking the Cowboys. Oh no, I've already picked the Cowboys. Hmm. How are you the only one that knew hmm. we were doing this? We both forgot, but you're well because I had already picked the Ravens. And then during the show, uh, I opened the dock and realized that I couldn't pick them. Right. You know what? 
Screw it. I'm picking uh I'm picking the Bears this week I as like my that. winner. That's a good pick. Yeah. Yeah. Good pick. All right. For real this time, Mina. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. See you Bye, soon. Guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Next up, Wozni. All right, now we can welcome into the show another show Hall of Famer, back-to-back uh, Thursday, or excuse me, Fridays with a show Hall of Famer, the great Wozni Lambrey. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Doing much better now that the Jets have fired or demoted Nathaniel oh, Hackett. Gosh. I mean, we'll get to your Jets. First of all, I would like to address your hot take that you never liked Halloween, even when you never. was since you was six. You since never liked Halloween. Why? Why do I mean you don't like candy? What's wrong with you? I don't like looking bad. That's you it. don't have to like, look bad. Like you Halloween, to, dude, no one makes you dress up, and so you can be whatever you want. Let Let me ask you something, Dominique. How often is a man wearing a Halloween costume where like? <laughs> He looked j- just as good <laughs> as fair. he does when he's just in his regular clothes. Well, I mean, if I wanna if I wanna dress up like I don't know, if I wanna give, okay, give a little Zeus go. costume, I mean that, that I'm doing something. It might be a little Mike Tyson. We can't all be like Charlie and pick up chicks at the bar <laughs> dressed as a rat with cheese in its teeth. <laughs> he's referencing me dressing as Cupid my freshman year of college oh. and leaving my dorm in a diaper with a pink heart spray painted <laughs> on my stomach. Were you pudgy? <laughs> yeah, a uh, little yeah, bit. A little bit. Uh, you got to be fat to pull off. And the hair. blonde curls. You know Looked what? Looked like I was 11 years old. An oversized 11 year old. It was great. I think Wozni is lying because clearly this is going to be a very old man reference. But Wozni is has a shirt made out of the Halloween costume from Karate Kid. Hmm. That is the shower curtain from Karate Kid. <laughs> you can't tell me it's not the shower curtain costume from Karate Kid. The very first one, like 1985, which is why Charlie didn't give me any laughs. I've never seen it. you never seen Karate Kid? <laughs> no. That's definitely, it was a polka dot shower yeah, curtain. Yeah, that, uh, that was a staple for those of us who didn't have cable growing up, Charlie. They, <laughs> yes, they put right. that thing on Channel 11 every damn day, yeah. damn near. <laughs> Had to watch Karate Kid. It was nothing else on that mm. and Bloodsport. Oh, I've seen Bloodsport. I don't remember what uh, dunk contest it was, but I remember, this is really how old I am, the dunk contest was appointment viewing, and oh, yeah. we didn't have cable. So I remember going to Reggie's house, my homeboy Reggie, well, it was my brother's homeboy Reggie, so we could watch the dunk contest. We got cable soon after, because... And by my parents ain't want me hanging out with Reggie too much. I think was, was probably the reason why eventually <laughs> we got cable. Like, yeah, this this a minor investment. We will pay for cable to keep your <laughs> from being over at Reggie's house. Shout out to Reggie if he's listening. <laughs> Shout out to Reggie. Well, oh, anyway, uh, who knows what Reggie's up to right now? That's a perfect transition right into one person who makes a series of bad decisions to. The New York Jets, which seems like a collection of people who are making a series of bad decisions. We're happy to have Wozni on because mm-hmm. he is a big Jets fan. Are you are you a Mets fan? Because that could like count. I that. am a Mets oh, fan. Let's go Team Mets. Destiny. That's right. Yeah. We're in so. the LCS, man. The plucky underdog with the highest payroll in the league, baby. <laughs> we, we don't want our friends to be happy. No. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let's talk about how sad you are you about your you Jets. You can't hurt us. You can't hurt me and Woz. <laughs> oh, yeah. Charlie's still high because his Vandy's won and because he thinks he has a quarterback. Post traumatic anyway. Snyder disorder over. <laughs> All right, Wozni. I don't know where you want to start, but it sounds like you're happy yeah. right now. You're in a good mood, feeling up? Well, no. I, I, initially, <laughs> when I heard that, you know, I keep wanting to call Robert Sala Mo Sala. Uh, I which, do the same you know, thing. The Liv- yeah. Liverpool legend. But, you know, oh. when Robert Sala got let go. That's perfect. It's because, like, Egypt. And that's where Aaron Rodgers was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Is it is it most solid Egyptian? Yeah, he's Egyptian. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Uh, uh, when they let him go, and you realize that the person in the organization with the most juice, um, Aaron Rodgers, has not been good at his job. Mm. It's hard to feel positive about that. That like we're we're finding scapegoats for Aaron Rodgers is failing. Because let's face it. The reason why the Jets hired 
Nate Hackett, and Hack is in his name, y'all. <laughs> the reason they even hired the guy is because of his relationship right. to Aaron Rodgers. And I text you guys. I text you guys often when I'm watching the Jets. Very <laughs> frustrated. I'm like, this has to be the easiest offense in the NFL to game plan against. They don't do anything. It's just Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully, um, when he gets man coverage, it's like, yo, let's do some sleight of hand, back shoulder thing. Yeah. Let's do some play where me and my wide receiver have to be in a complete mind meld to execute, right? Um, and I'm watching other teams play where dudes are just running free, yeah. running wide open, scheming stuff up. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And, like, the team that's 22nd in offensive efficiency just fired their defense focus. Yeah. head coach so the the thing about the Aaron Rodgers situation that I find interesting and I, I I've talked about this on a couple of different platforms now but it's that Aaron Rodgers is inconsistent Aaron Rodgers personality with the way that he wants to play and I know it sounds weird but when you think about someone who is completely reliant on being more excellent than everyone else and being more precise than everyone else and being in, and you're right, a lot of these plays are not open plays, but it's like, all right, if he's here and this guy's there, I'm going to throw it here. That requires practice and preparation. That is not consistent with the same guy who is skipping mandatory mini camps. And I'm not the guy to criticize someone for that type of stuff, but the guy who is generally getting off a R E L A X vibe. It's not consistent with that. Whereas when you had Peyton and, and Brady go to their other locations, those people are competitive psychopaths, which I openly will say that maybe that's not great for you in the long run, but you know what it's good for? It's good for winning Super Bowls. <laughs> it really helps you win Super mm -hmm. Bowls. And Aaron Rodgers seems like at this point when his athleticism is failing him some and his ability is failing him some, you have to compensate in some other way. But he can't compensate in that way, and it feels bad. And we say all this knowing full well that he's going to throw for four, 16, and three touchdowns on the Bills, and they're going to win, and everyone's going to be like, oh, everything's okay, and then they're going to go on a losing streak. That's exactly what's going to happen. And maybe if he was the 40-year-old quarterback of some other franchise, that might be <laughs> in the cards for him. This is the Jets, guys. Yeah. Like, the, the idea that this is going to turn the season around is laughable, and I think the biggest indictment of what Aaron Rodgers has done this year with the Jets is the regression of Wilson. Um, mm -hmm. Just the idea that this guy was so clearly one of the elite receivers in the NFL last year with Zach Wilson uh, throwing passes to him. And now uh, he's a freaking pumpkin. I think that's, yeah. that's Aaron Rodgers. I, I, like, I don't see how you can lay that at the feet of anybody else when you're blue chip wide receiver who's who's a young guy like it's not it, he should be progressing yeah. in his production and he's gotten worse like and again Aaron Rodgers is like I don't do motion yeah I don't do play action I don't do play action <laughs> well that's the thing that I, when I watch the Jets yeah. too they feel like two different offenses they yeah. feel like okay we're gonna let Aaron have a turn where he's gonna run some of the stuff they ran in Green Green Bay where he's trying to side stuff to the line scrimmage they go go through the script of that stuff it doesn't work and then they go to this incredibly constipated slop that Nate Hackett calls on the back end. I, I was well, this is not to hurt your feelings, but it's Brees Hall too. Brees Hall has two fewer or two more yep. rushing yards over the last two weeks than Joe Flacco. Yeah, the offensive Joe line has kind there. of totally. been a horrible disappointment. And obviously, like when you can't get your running game going, we know whose fault that is. It's not the running back's fault. It's the line. They can't generate any push. Um, up front and everything sort of flows downhill of that but when you bring it so like here's the thing yes we should have a better running game but like when you hand the keys to a franchise over to somebody mm. hopefully it's somebody who can overcome certain deficiencies. That's why we make you sort of the caretaker of the offense. It's this idea that you're great enough that we can sort of you know, hand you all of these responsibilities and say, you're going to take us home, big dog. And he's not been a big dog. He's been a poodle. I, I do not believe that this decision is going to change the fortunes of their season, but I do believe Aaron's going to put up big numbers and they beat the Bills. See, like, I it just hap it has to happen. That. Like, I feel like the Bills are at this weird down oh, We can take also. it to that game now anyway. Yeah, so, I know it's one of Waz's yeah. uh, it's, it's most exciting game of the week. Yeah, we do. Our back to our segment, good game, guilty pleasure game. Wozni, you're a good game. 
So here's here's why it's a great game for me and and, and as a Jets fan where I'm at right now, um, I'm in a no lose situation because either a we win this game and we bounce back, or two, I get to watch Aaron Rodgers eat it <laughs> in public and get smoked. <laughs> Like, the arrogance and just the bluster from this dude, I'm at the point where I'm borderline rooting against him. Yeah. You know, like, getting coaches fired and all of that. Like, either he comes through or he doesn't, and I get to enjoy that. Yeah, I definitely think. I told you, I believe it, that they're going to put up numbers this week, but they're not a consistent organization. And I think there's, like, some boost that comes from switching head coaches and there's mm -hmm. an – like I think that that and they're going up against a Bills team that is on a wild slide with a quarterback that looked to clearly have a concussion and was playing poorly before that. This team, the Bills are not they don't look like a serious outfit and the Jets are going to be good enough. Their defense is going to play well and Aaron's going to be good enough that uh, people are going to start feeling good about the Jets again. And they're going to be number one in the division and. Probably uh, make everyone or not make everyone, but have people considering them to have or have people discussing Robert Sala as if he was the problem. And then the subsequent weeks, we're going to see them return back to form. See, when I look at this, though, like, OK, obviously this, this all hinges on Josh Allen's cognitive function. Like if yeah. he he was really bad after he was concussed and they let him go back in the game and his head bounced off the turf. It was bad before that. too. Yeah, but he's worse afterwards. Yeah. Like the accuracy was just back to when he was thrown to square bodies when everyone was <laughs> making fun of Josh Allen. But like assuming that he is healthy enough to play and it's not like a two a situation where they're just rushing him back in totality. He's still behind a very good offensive line. It's Josh Allen. He's going to be the best player in the game by far. And the Jets are so limited offensively that you have to imagine the Bills are going to be a positive game script. And, like, this is a swing game for the AFC East. Like, the yeah. Bills want to win this game and establish right. themselves in first place in a, in a very significant way. So, assuming he's not seeing uh, – what was Le LeBron say? He saw three rims. Yeah. Assuming, assuming Josh Allen's not seeing three Khalil Shakirs, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. I, assuming that he's seeing at least one Khalil yeah. Shakir. Who might not play. Be, yeah, who, they'll yeah. be much better off because that's Missed their – Yeah, that's their biggest issue is weapons. And I guess that's my concern is this defense is still very talented. And – they have one player in Josh Allen that can overcome that, but they might need some more help. So that's my concern for the Bills. Uh, and, yeah, I think – I don't know. We, It's a hard game to uh, project, but it's going to be a fun game to watch. What do you think, Wozniak? I just don't understand – like, obviously, you know um – Denver's defense and some of the – like, the Vikings' defense is better than the Bills, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the Vikings have been making everybody look bad all year on defense. Shouts to Flores. Like, he's doing his thing. Same with the with the Broncos. Like, right. they've proven that they are one of the better defenses in the NFL over the course of this short season. And so, like, you know, I don't want to give – the Jets too much guff for getting smoked on offense on um during those two games, but I'm I'm just not convinced that Aaron yeah. Rodgers is going to do something different. Like the Bills personnel is worse, and so you know you would assume that they that they should be able to beat these guys, but that's what this whole thing is predicated on. Yeah. It's like Aaron Rodgers has to beat whatever the coverage is, and like our receivers have to like when these heart like that interception to Mike Williams where he just basically Aaron Rodgers just threw it yeah. to the, the DB. Right. Like Mike Williams had no chance on that. Like our, th like we're just gonna keep running. Like that's what we're <laughs> that's our offense and we're gonna beat the Bills with that. I got I got one question for you, Dominique, on this, because this is about your new coach bump. That do you get a new coach bump when your quarterback fires the coach, then goes on Pat McAfee and claims he only has soft power within the organization oh and then says that the new coach will bring accountability to everyone in the organization. That's probably a good thing while also not taking accountability for any of his actions that led to this point. Like yeah. if you're in the locker room, you cannot take that seriously. Yeah, new coach bump doesn't always work, but I don't know. Yeah, it's impossible. I, I think so. First of all, I just realized that I don't like this version of fans, the version that Wozni is now and the version that Charlie has always been up until now. I don't like guys out here mitigating their guff. I don't like guys with like uh, reasonable expectations. <laughs> I want one end or the other. Like, they have pushed you both into apathy. Wozni realized that Wozni is a fan, a lifelong fan of the Jets. And he said, 
If they win, that'll be great. If they lose, then I can root against my quarterback. I do not like that. <laughs> this is a terrible hey, place. This is, that this, is where, this is exactly where Charlie has been ever since I'd known him until two weeks ago. That didn't even register to me because that seems so normal. <laughs> oh, yeah. If we, get to, if we lose, you get to root against this <laughs> been ruining my life. Hell, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I we need that. to find silver linings. And I want to <sighs> say this, too, because I think it's important, right? I think Aaron Rodgers has, you know, become somewhat of a pariah, specifically with people in our industry and our mm. cohort. I think the vaccine thing became like this big political thing. And yeah. generally, sports writers are of a certain political hue, and they held it against Aaron Rodgers. Like, people were really pissed about the lying about the vaccine and blah, 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 blah. And I'm here to say i don't care about any of that stuff like in fact aaron Rodgers is probably the most liberal star quarterback of my lifetime like all these other dudes are conservative like yeah. peyton manning and philip rivers and Pretty drew Brees and yeah. tom brady like all these dudes are conservative dudes and nobody Tua. ever held it against them right I, I think <laughs> yeah what are you said? <laughs> Nothing. Keep rolling. <laughs> oh, we don't want to sidetrack this. We don't want to sidetrack this with tweets. We don't want to <laughs> sidetrack this with tweets that I that are burned in my memory and I wish that I could forget. We do not want to sidetrack this show with that at all. Um, you're right about all that, but I will say it's not just about the vaccine thing. I, I think you're right. A lot of people are put off by that, but we will forgive and forget if you ball. But that yeah. wasn't the only thing. He had the conspiracy theory thing. Like, if you think of his headlines that he's had since he's been there, there have been very few, damn, that boy, is, that's a bad man. And it's been a lot mm. of, like, what's this weirdo up to? Yeah. Like, can you imagine anyone else with the run of headlines that he had from potentially he's going to be the vi a vice presidential nominee Cap to, trails. Yeah, to <laughs> oh, yeah, saying he was going to yeah. the RFK Oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's more, Wozniak. <laughs> there's more. He said, I'm going on darkness retreats where I'm going to sit in a room for hours on end in complete darkness. I'm also going to go get high on drugs because it makes my brain work better. Like, what? Mm -hmm. a, uh, then, then there was, then we just get to like vaccines and suggestion that, or being connected with suggestion that people was lying about school shootings. Like, these are his headlines. So, yeah. I understand why when he starts to struggle, there is a cohort that's like, good. But the fact of the matter is, if he goes off for the rest of the season, we all gonna be like, damn, he nice. And not we're gonna forget about all this ridiculous stuff that he's been associated with. I can't wait to listen to this convo again after he's knocked out in the freaking 10th game and the Jets season is over in misery. We gotta um, get off this, As man. has been the case. <laughs> I hate it, I hate it. I hate when team fans and teams are beating up their own team. We There's gotta no get off optimism. It. But by the way, you forgot the Deshaun Kaiser one where he was interviewed two years ago and he, he said that the first conversation he ever had with Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers asked him if he thought, uh, like, let's get the exact quote. Uh, do you believe in 9-11? <laughs> Moving on. All right. <laughs> Rogers told him to read up on that. <laughs> read up on that. Yeah, that those are your quarterback's headlines. He has more <laughs> nonsense headlines than touchdowns. And if you multiply by interceptions, you are in a dark, dark place on a poor darkness retreat. All right. Uh, let's what's, go. What's your guilty pleasure game? All right. I was gonna do my my oh. look forward to game, but that's fine. Why is the guilty pleasure game? Uh, my no big deal. Was he go right ahead? It's the Charlie Kravitz show. It's whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> Charlie wants to do. Apparently, I'm good. Oh man. Uh, oh god. You guys are hilarious. Uh, my guilty go. pleasure game is Jacksonville and Chicago. Uh, and the reason for this is connected to the Jets quarterback situation because I've been secretly rooting against. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta have Wazdi on more, man. We don't have Wazdi on enough. Secretly. We think that it's just because it's not basketball season, we can't talk to Wazdi. That's a mistake, clearly. I've been <laughs> secretly rooting against the Jacksonville quarterback ever since the Jets were not able to draft him. The Hail Mary. Um, in that draft, we ended up with Sam Darnold, of course, oh, who Zach stinks. Wilson. Um, or was that the Zach, was Zach was Wilson? Yeah. We ended up with, okay, who also stinks. Um... <laughs> 
And why I'm interested in this game, like, I actually am a Caleb believer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I really do think that he's going to eventually figure it out. Um, It seems like he's making progress week by week. It's not like, you know, crazy progress, right? Like, um, he's not looking like some... He's not looking like Charlie's quarterback. We'll yeah. just say that, oh, right? Oh, oh. Um, but he's making progress, and I really do believe in him. I, like, one of my boys, shouts to Sam is Fendiari. Uh, he's taking the opposite tact on Caleb. He calls him Treylib. Um, and the reason for that is when Trey Young came out, everybody yeah. kept saying he's the next Steph Curry. Oh, uh, he's saying that Caleb Williams, everybody's saying he's the he's the, he's <laughs> Next he's Pat. the next Pat Mahomes. Yeah. He's closer to, to to Trey. Um, but I, I don't believe that. I actually do think that um this guy's gonna eventually fulfill his potential. And I'll be watching eye in that game, man. Cause every time Jacksonville stinks it up, I'm I'm happy, honestly. Um, so about Caleb, i I stumbled upon this stat um earlier when I was getting ready for the show. Uh, off target throw percentage. 23% of his throws are off target. He leads the league in it. That is not very accurate when damn near a quarter of your passes don't go where they're supposed to go. But yeah. to your point, he's getting better. Mm -hmm. He went from week one, 31%. Week two, 36, 33, 32. Last week, 11% off target. That man is getting better and improving every step of the way. I think most of us are rooting for him to be good because we saw how, like, and we still see the glimpses of the physical ability in this game. It would be such a damn shame if, it doesn't if he's not able to sustain himself as a professional so that we can see those things more consistently. So yeah. he is getting better. He's getting more comfortable. I think the offense is getting a little is adapting to him a little bit more. But yeah, Jacksonville is definitely a get right opportunity. Yeah, and inaccuracy has never been a bugaboo for him. Yeah. So which is why I think like he's gonna get that right. He's been pretty freaking accurate. That was one of his strengths, like um coming out in the draft was like this guy puts the ball where it needs to be pretty much every single time. So I think that stuff will iron itself out. And and what, whatever happens the rest of Trevor Lawrence's career, all this talk about him being L.A. mixed with, you know, Randall <sighs> Cunningham mixed with Michael Vick. Like, that's out of there. That's <laughs> out of here. He ain't none of that. And, yeah, that makes me pretty happy. <laughs> It's kind of such a hater spirit. He'd be even worse if he was on the Jets. <laughs> because yeah. you know what the opposite would be, right? It would be that the Jets missed out on yeah. the next big blah, 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 blah. And so, like, the fact that it's not, it's, mm -hmm. come on, man. Y'all would have ruined him, too. We get small wins when we're the Jets, man. Yeah. This is a small yeah. win for me. We didn't miss out it's on a generational quarterback. It's not like he would have came up there and been good. Y'all would have ruined of him, too. Of course not. <laughs> of course I don't know, though. The Jets might be more stable than that year we had Urban Meyer. <laughs> I guess. Maybe. That was only one year, though. The Jets have been like this forever. Yeah, the, true. the last time I was on Get Up, Greeny, who is a Jets fan, <laughs> eviscerated Woody Johnson, the owner of the Jets. It was magical. And it was like just because the history of the Jets is a lot of coaches and a lot of quarterbacks. And essentially, the point that Greeny was making is like it's been terrible since Woody took over. But nope. all these coaches and all these quarterbacks can't be wrong. They, they, many of them have had success elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. There's one, there's one person, and I had to dap Greeny up in a commercial break because he mockingly said, called that man Ambassador Woody. <laughs> he was cooking, man. He was, that is not like him. That's how, that's the type of fan that I like. I like a fan who's actually Listen. has enough faith to, st to still be scarred and, and cook somebody that needs cooking. Listen, man, uh, Woody Johnson obviously is the common denominator of mm. all of the failures. If an organization misses the playoffs 14 years in a row, it's ownership. It starts at the top at a certain point. Like it's incompetence up there. Like you, you can't like, that's almost impossible in today's NFL, man, where you just like luck into having enough talent to win 10 games and show up in somebody's playoff. The fact that that, that that hasn't happened for the Jets is obviously an ownership issue. That like We're that's back so on the Jets. obvious. We back on the Jets. But, you know, he's he's I, upset I now. Give, Get him angry. I like it. I look, listen, I want to give a shout out to Greeny for being a person in power with a mm -hmm. microphone, with a platform, mm -hmm. and using it to, you know, scream at the right people. Yeah, I do appreciate that. All yeah. right. So we spent way too much time on the Jets. I think I, I brought us back, so I apologize. I'll move on to. We're going to end up back on the Jets. No, we got to avoid times. going back to the Jets. My, um, my game 
What is my oh Eagles Browns? That's the that's my guilty pleasure game. Hmm. Yeah, it's two bad teams going at it. Guilty <laughs> pleasure game is the Eagles Browns. The Eagles have been bad for a while, despite the fact that we know all their players' names and their O line is good. We keep convincing ourselves that they're good, but they're bad. But I'm looking forward to watching this game for one reason in particular. I got a theory, and so my last theory. I don't know if you heard this one. My last theory was Joe Mar Flacco. Joe Flacco is going around trying to get revenge for what Lamar did to him by yeah. creeping up from behind on all the black quarterbacks. So from the guy who brought you that, I got a new one. You ready? Ready. The Browns don't want to bench Deshaun Watson. They trying to get him hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it sounds funny, but here is the stat to prove it. Get ready. Get ready. So, of all the quarterbacks in the league who have over 100 dropbacks, Deshaun Watson has 220 dropbacks. He's been contacted 80 times. So this is not including rushing attempts. This is just dropbacks. Number two on that list is Jacoby Brissett, who is contacted 54 times. It's absurd. Wow. The this is how absurd it is. I was looking for a way to demonstrate how crazy it is. So I got nerdy, which I know you'll appreciate, Wozni. And I started digging into bell curves and Z-scores. Now, I don't know if this is going to land with everybody, but I know it's going to land with you. Listen to this, Wozni. Listen, get ready. Prepare yourself. His 80 contacts is 3.5 standard deviations below the mean. You know how absurd that is? That's that's not even on the bell cur curve. That's like it's hanging out over there. Yeah, it's like way. Oh, that is essentially like if you said the average amount of distance that a person covers in a day is a mile. Let's say that's average. This is essentially that he is running an ultra marathon in the wrong direction. It's absurd to me. They try to get him hurt. So you laughed originally. You're not laughing no more. You are on board with this so, theory. I think it's also, but. He also holds the ball forever. He's sacking himself. But yeah, I do think so. All saying. right, fine. Modify this the theory. He don't want to be out there either. They both trying to get him hurt to end their misery. Also, just so you know, it's gonna get worse. He's fed the easiest schedule of pass defenses in the entire NFL to start the season. He hasn't faced a single pass defense that's better than 19th in the league so far. And he's gonna have to go against in his division, Baltimore, the Steelers, they play the Chiefs. It's going to be comical. How bad that guy. He like I thought no one could be worse than Bryce Young. He might be worse than Bryce Young. One clarifying question. I don't know if you could grab this now or soon, but I'll pass it to Wozni after this. Are we basing these past defenses off of numbers that are generated after they played Deshaun Watson? It's a good point. Or going into the game against Deshaun Watson. It's a good point. I'll effort that. <laughs> All right, Wozni. So I want to ask you, Dominique, as a tape grinder, right? Because I've been wondering this for like the past year and a half. Cause in his last season that he played for the Texans, Deshaun Watson was basically universally accepted as like a top five quarterback. And yeah. like and, and and everybody was like, despite all of the crazy, nasty stuff that he was associated with, um, in terms of those cases and the criminal charges and the lawsuits and all of that stuff, everybody kind of agreed that as a football player, that number that he got um from from Cleveland the 230 million dollars like if he is the football player that he was in Houston then he's worth that money right. he's obviously not like what was he doing then that he's somehow no longer able to do now what was he like good at he hasn't had like some major catastrophic i guess injury but he's had a bunch of injuries and then there mm. is the psychological toll that as he's been ex experiencing that I think also could have a deleterious effect on his play. Like there's nothing that is on the film. That's like egregious about like a, that you can see egregiously is his physical ability. But that's the thing with like professional sports. Everybody is so good. If that shoulder injury is actually impacting him, then that could, if he was relying on that arm strength, whatever percentage he lost, that could impact it. The knee injuries, if he's relying on that athleticism, that could impact him. But to Charlie's point, a lot of his best stuff, and he played on schedule, but a lot of his best things were Russell Wilson-esque, like scramble, make mm. things happen. And he's not doing that anymore, which is also could be tied to 
connection with the players that you have around you and the offense that you're running in. So, like, it's harder to make it completely clear, but he took a long time off of football. There's so many different factors that you could contribute it to that you could say contribute to how he's falling apart, and it could be bits and pieces of all of them, but he he feels done. And if he manages to get a win over this mediocre Eagles team, that makes that interesting because Nick Sirianni oh, yeah. is looking at Robert Sala like, hey – I might come join you. You know, another important factor of this game, too, is like two black quarterbacks underachieving, and I don't feel self-conscious about oh, it. I don't even care. No, it's like, man. it's fine. It's, it's all good. Like, whatever. Who cares? I appreciate you, Ozzy. Because you're right. Goes on, the thing you know? is, there, I can't remember. There was never another time in history where it, I didn't even think about it. It didn't even cross yeah. my mind. I was like, these two quarterbacks out here stinking. <laughs> I, if we've Bro, had this was, conversation I was, before, I don't, I don't even got to pretend like they're good. I could come on here and just be honest and be like, these black quarterbacks stink. We were talking up Charlie <laughs> Batch back in the days, y'all. This is what we was dealing with. I won't with. let you disrespect my man, Charlie. Ray Lucas was getting oh, looks, okay, yeah, man. Like, him. it was crazy. Hey, Tony Banks was balling, boy. You better just chill out. <laughs> they, they never gave Michael Bishop a chance. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> never. Uh, Hail Mary specialist. <laughs> yeah, shouts to Quincy Carter, man. I wonder what he's up to these days. <laughs> all right. Uh, y'all made Charlie Wood go play basketball. Anyway, all right. Cardinals Packers is my good game. That's what I'm looking forward to, which I didn't expect it to be a good game coming into the season. The um, Cardinals are actually playing much better defense than anyone had anticipated. They're doing some more interesting things. Uh, Jonathan Gannon's defensive scheme is like one of the darlings of film community, even though it doesn't always produce results. It produced results in this particular game. So I'm looking to see how well the Cardinals play in this game. They can continue to build off it, and the Packers are still trying to come back. But the biggest thing about this game to me is Marvin Harrison – Mm -hmm. He had a rough start to the season, very first game. I did a whole review on the game and assured you guys that he's still going to be nice. It was just that they were not prepared for this game. And then he came out and had 100 yards and two touchdowns in the first damn quarter. And I was right. But since then, he hasn't been very good. <laughs> He has been put up to numbers. So you've been wrong since then. Is <laughs> no, what you're no, saying? no, 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 no. I, I will understanding that you and everybody else who's watching this don't watch the tape. I can just say you got to watch the tape. And okay, that makes copy. me right. Because I, I, I think that they are not – it felt like they made a concerted effort to get him the ball in that second game. Mm -hmm. Since then, it hasn't felt like they've been doing that, which is fine. He still attracts attention. The 49ers aren't a team that plays a lot of man coverage, so they didn't do a bunch of doubling. But you could tell uh, from a gravity standpoint that he's attracting attention, and they're not doing specific things to get him open. I also noticed that he's – I didn't look up the numbers, but he seems to be off the field – a ridiculous amount of time compared to other true number one receivers, which may speak to his uh, his uh, understanding of the offense or preparation or conditioning. But that's su surprising and shocking also. But all that said, when the game was on the line and they needed one big play to put it away, Kyler dropped back, was getting blitzed, and threw a prayer up over to 18, and he went and got it. So I think we're, he's still going to be fine going forward. Yeah, he's definitely going to be But not better than Malik Neighbors. No. <laughs> hey, as soon as Malik Neighbors uh, gets, gets his cognitive ability back up to where it needs to be, yeah, he he was playing like the best receiver in the league. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I wasn't anticipating that. But, yeah, I, I think that uh, Marvin Jr. will be one of the best receivers in the, in the league. Malik got a chance to be the which is crazy. The neighbor stuff is crazy though. They like they used him like a running back. He's getting like twenty touches a game, and that's scary. <laughs> Not like a runner, like an old school, like a nineties yeah. running back. Like it was we grew up watching. They just kept handing it to him or throwing it to him, whatever they could do. All right, all right. My good game: Lions, Cowboys. This is a revenge game for the Lions <laughs> last year from the ineligible lineman yeah. game where they got they got screwed over. Uh, but also. We have Jared Goff coming off of 18 for 18 with the offense getting really hot against the Seahawks, which almost gave John Gruden an aneurysm. He was so excited to yell <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> um, and the Cowboys have sort of gone, well, they haven't sort of, they have gone 19 straight games without uh, allowing a 100-yard rusher. The Lions can run the damn football with Gibbs and Montgomery, and that offensive line is off awesome. And to we, we're, we're getting to the point where it's like, these are leverage weeks for these teams. Like, the Cowboys want to stay in the conversation at the top of the NFC East. 
Um, and this, these are important games for them to win because Washington is just going to keep winning at the top of the division. I'm sorry, Wozniak. If you saw me um, just kind of drift off, it's because I got sad because when Charlie said that about John Gruden, I realized that I spent all this time looking at stats and studying tape when all I got to do <laughs> oh, yeah. is make just a funny face score. and read, yeah. read a bunch of stats and say, shred them. It's like, it's pretty, it's like that. <laughs> it's, it's got me feeling nicey. <laughs> yeah. The thing, the thing, um, and like this season so far, all the effort that I put into this show, the thing of mine that's gotten the most attention is, I think your hips are fine, Shannon. Like that's this the thing in my career <laughs> this this year that has gotten the most attention. So why am I wasting my time? I refuse to break this game down, Wozniak. What do you have to say? The about John it? Gruden thing is tough though because you, he, you don't look he got like a Chucky doll. Emails? Is that why? No, oh, oh, okay, you, you don't. Oh, you have geez. to look like an actual cartoon character, oh, okay. Chucky doll, like he does in order to make it as visually compare um um compelling. compelling yeah. Excuse me. And he's sweating yeah, too. Yeah, like. You're just like, you know, a regular, yeah. you know, decently handsome black <laughs> dude. It's just not going to work for you, you the can, same. You can you can lose that decently. Huh? Don't slip that in on me now. <laughs> Man, it's not decently nothing. Dominic, you, you know that those videos are unbelievable. No, that's I'm agreeing. Like, I watch those videos, too. And I'm like, this. it's like I'm drawn in. But I, it's kind of like when I, I get, like, drawn into, like, uh, pimple popping videos. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like, why... Am I enjoying this? I can't explain. It's the same thing with John Gruden in the dark, sweating, saying numbers, <laughs> and barking. I'm like, this, this, the beat drop on it. I, I oh, can't yeah. wait for him to say, nicey. I mean, it's also that he runs out of steam by like the fourth <laughs> quarterback by the end. He's just, he's hanging on I for dear life. In, I couldn't do that in warm ups. Shred him. <laughs> Gross. By the way, I just assumed Charlie picked this game because Dak and the Cowboys are going to get smoked. And yeah, that's it. He, wants he just upset. loves to just do that, <laughs> to the, talk about the Cowboys' yeah. problems. Their offense is so damn punchless, man. I used to really mm -hmm. like watching yeah. them, at least on offense, when they had that thing rolling. They just seem so boring and predictable now. Yeah. I, I There's going to be... Some serious energy on this show after that first Cowboys Commanders game. I'm going to be the one walking on set like a DB. Not <laughs> good. You deserve it. You deserve it. The funny thing is, if I were to make a comparison for your quarterback, like your guy is Dak esque in the way that he plays. It's very much like prime Dak, which is, and yeah, maybe he can get some support. Cause right now, that's the Cowboys. It's like Dak has to be flawless. If Dak is flawless, you got a shot. The rest of you guys is eh. comparing a rookie quarterback to regular season Dak Prescott is an incredible compliment. Yeah. The guy's no. second in the MVP. <laughs> it's me it's meant to be an incredible compliment. I just the, thought you the, might be annoyed by it because I the, added a very regular, specific the, the precursor. The regular season qualifier is yeah. just burning my soul right now. <laughs> it just kills me because I like Dominique. Do have a soft spot for yeah. Dak. Um, which I didn't honestly when he started. I thought it was nonsense that he yeah. took Romo's job and I kind of yep. held it against him. And then he just kept showing and proving. I'm like, oh, I like this guy. He shows and proves until he gets to the playoffs. Oh God, it's depressing. I don't know if I if I've explained my Dak journey on this show before, but the way I became a Dak guy is because I too was like, oh, Tony Romo's healthy. His rookie year, Dak's rookie year. Tony Romo's healthy. Don't y'all want him win the Super Bowl? Put Dak mm -hmm. in. And then in that playoff game that he lost to Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers threw that ridiculous pass on him, Dak, Dak led three fourth quarter scoring drives. And I was like, all right, I believe. And so then I was like, all right, I'm on this guy's side. And then a couple years later, Dan Orlovsky was like, Carson Wentz is way better than Dak Prescott. That's and crazy. I was like, you – and that's how I became a Dak guy because I was on TV losing my mind because I was like, what? And Carson was playing was putting up numbers, but I was like, I'm watching these games. The way that it's yeah. a lot like um, Jared Goff. It's like the way that these numbers are coming, I recognize it requires a, 
some skill, but it's not the degree of difficulty of Dak. And then it's like, and so then from then on, everybody's like, hey, you Dak's guy. You must be his cousin. Like, no. <laughs> I just I just watched him, and, and I had to sit here and listen to a man tell me that Carson Wentz is better than him. And now I'm stuck Seven with years ago. You got oh. to let it go, buddy. But I tried to let it go. I did not name myself a Dak guy. Everyone around was like, because everyone was, ha- not everyone, but most people were having this conversation like there was a real conversation between the two, a real comparison. And I was like, what the f- are y'all looking at? And now I'm right. I know more it's, about it, quarterbacks. Charlie, it's generational trauma, it man. You, you wouldn't understand it. Trust me. <laughs> oh, well. Actually, <laughs> Charlie Kravitz might have a thing or two to say <laughs> about that. Do you guys want my guilty pleasure game? Yeah, you're trying to end the show now. Get up out of here before we get fired. Te- Texas Patriots. I, uh, I'm i uh, fascinated by the decision of now to play Drake May. Like I, I'm sure they know that he's better than Jacoby Brissett at this point. Uh, but if the offensive line was the reason you weren't playing him in the first place, Doing it against Will Anderson and the Texans when you're going to be playing from behind for most of the game seems interesting. And I also just kind of want to find out if he's good because all of these quarterbacks have been kind of good so far. Yeah. Even Bo Nix has had more flashes than the quarterbacks from last year's draft. Yeah, I'm looking for those. You got anything on this one, Wozni? I, I just wonder what the logic is. Like, Char- like I'm curious if if it's like, you know what, this year is a wash. We're going to build a better thing around it in the offseason and let our guy, um, yeah. you know, our, our future franchise come in under a better situation. Yeah. I just wonder how that plays in a locker room right. where you'd be like, mm-hmm. yo, we want to win, but this exactly. one guy is so special. Nobody can touch his tush. Yeah. It's like, but they, it, they've it, changed it's, that. It's a mixed message. Yeah, and that, they've unmixed that message now. And I, I, I think that that's the reason why you would do it, because I get it. If we're running a fantasy team or a video game team, you're like, all right, no sense in putting him out there. But you also have 52 other guys who you have to manage and motivate and, and have to take you seriously and respect you. And if there's one guy who is out here poo-poo staking and then we in practice and this other guy is, is slicing it. up the scout team, we can't. Yeah. you can't send me out there to – to get uh, sub concussive episodes and <laughs> and not try to win, that's ridiculous. Also, also like Jacoby Brissett, like I, it's nice to make NFL money, you know, mm. semi started money. It's but a great life. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, it's just like yeah, we're just putting you out to slaughter. Like you're the sacrificial you say, they lamb. Said it like publicly that's crazy. Too. Yeah, they it's said like, it publicly. The like, is better. Than him. That you're is a just, human sacrifice. Yeah. How, how bleak is it going to be if October twenty seventh? The Jets roll up to New England, and Drake May just eviscerates the Jets. You know what? Wazdy's going to be cheering. He's going to be happy for it because he's a— I don't don't know, though, because you might be looking at a decade of it. No, the Pats are different. There's no silver linings in any Pats victory anywhere. I want them to lose, suffer, and die no matter who the opponent is, much less the Jets. Uh, Like, so— you know, we just vanquished the Phillies in the playoffs, the Mets did, and the Phillies have overtaken the Pats as my most hated team oh. in all of sports because the Pats are no longer relevant. Belichick's gone. Brady's gone. They don't torment me as much as they used to. But in terms of the hate rankings, they're still firmly in my top three. And so there, there's no scenario under which I would like to see the Patriots win ever for any reason whatsoever. All right, I'm going to close it out with this. One more guilty pleasure game for you guys. We don't have to discuss it, but I need you to know there's only a few cornerbacks in the league that are playing tight man coverage. And (laughs) I'm looking forward to watching Broncos Chargers because they got a man by the name of, not Patrick Sertan, Riley Moss. That boy be strapping up. I don't know why. I like pioneers. I like trendsetters, trailblazers. My man is out there blazing trails, and he is one of the best man coverage corners in the league right now. Check him out. Go go watch some Riley Moss tape. They found him in Iowa somewhere. I watched him against the Jets. He cooked oh, us. Yeah, it was I'm ridiculous. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, good luck to you and your Jets, Wozni. I appreciate you joining us. I can't wait to do this again. We'll check in with you on the Jets in a, a few weeks, hopefully. Hopefully not. (laughs) (laughs) All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. 
All right, thank you to Mina Kimes and Wozni Lambry. Of course, Charlie the Snack Kravitz out here with some nice shoes on for like the fifth show in a row. I love it. You've come up. Come a long way, Charlie. Wearing pants, too. Ooh, pants, too. All right, thanks to all the great producers. I love you, Podville. Um, Cortez, what are, what's the verdict on Cortez? Always a coward. All right, play the music. Oh, no, don't play the music. Show's over. I'm tired. I don't know what's going on. Goodbye. Go home. Oh, we out. That's what I normally say. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show.